And here he is uh, from New York, Zachariah Sitchin. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Guy. Good morning. Uh, it is a great honor to have you on. And you. Um, we, for about two years now, people have been asking me to get you on. So here you are. I'm not going to waste any time. I'd like to begin at the beginning, if we could. The 12th planet. Uh, is it Dr. Sitchin? Well, Mr. Wudu, Zachariah Wudu. <laughs> um, what is... In a nutshell, if you can do it, the theory of the 12th planet. What is the 12th planet? Well, you just said that not to waste time, you want to start at the beginning. And this is really uh, starting at the beginning. Because according to uh, uh, ancient texts that have come to us from Mesopotamia, today's Iraq, going back almost 6,000 years, they uh, provided us with a cosmogony dealing with how the solar system came into being and tell us that uh, soon after the solar system uh, where we are, our part of the universe, as soon as it uh, came into being about four billion or so years ago, an invader from space, a planet ejected from its own solar system somewhere else, was passing by, was drawn into the center of our solar system. Uh, had a collision with another planet that existed at that time between Mars and Jupiter. In that collision, half of that other planet uh, was smashed into bits and pieces, became mostly the asteroid belt that still uh, orbits between Mars and Jupiter. Part of it became uh, a comet that visits us from time to time, and some of those comets are in the news. And the other half of the destroyed planet was uh, shunted or thrust into a, a, a new orbit and became our planet Earth. That invader, which was called in the ancient text by the Sumerians Nibiru, which meant planet of the crossing, later renamed by the Babylonians in honor of their national god Marduk, <coughs> uh, became also a member of the solar system with a vast elliptical orbit that lasts about 3,600 years, uh, 3,600 of our years, yes. because to that planet and whoever might be on it, uh, one orbit is just one year, and that explains uh, such other problems as the so-called immortality of, of the gods from Greek mythology, etc. So that planet uh, became... Uh, a member, and according to the Sumerians, the twelfth member of the solar system because they counted uh, the sun. They said this is the family of the sun. They included the moon as, as, a, as a member in its own right for reasons that are given in those ancient texts. And, and ten planets, the nine we know about, and one more, the twelfth member. So, though from our astronomical viewpoint, it would be the a tenth planet. It is the, the planet which is the twelfth member. So the um, publisher of my first book, and by the way, it was 20 years ago, I condensed the, this, this title, the planet which is the twelfth member, and made it the twelfth planet. So this is the story of the twelfth planet, and it goes back to uh, the very uh, beginnings of our own solar system of the Earth, and the heavens as we know them. And this is really the source of the biblical tale and the beginning of the book of Genesis. When do you believe this 12th planet will return? Well, first of all, let me say I believe that uh, it will return because this would be a fulfillment of all the prophecies uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament and uh, in the writings, uh, the Holy Scriptures of, of other uh, nations in antiquity. What is the best uh, estimate of its return time? Uh, well, uh, can we go to the next question? <laughs> yes, we can. Okay. Um, there is um, a comet that has been discovered by two amateur uh, astronomers, right. now named Hillbop. First thought to be as big as a thousand miles across, now thought to be at least a hundred miles across with a dust cloud about it, uh, 2.5 million kilometers wide. It's big, very, very big, out beyond the orbit of Jupiter. They have calculated its return time, very interestingly, at about 
3,600 years. Is there any correlation? Uh, probably, but let me uh, explain why. Uh, the orbit of uh, Nibiru, as the Sumerians called it, that other planet, uh, which uh, is uh, given by them mathematically as 3,600 years, Mm -hmm. Because these orbits uh, shift, you know, even uh, Halley's Comet, which has a short period orbit of some 75 years, is sometimes 75, sometimes 77, because as the celestial bodies travel in our solar system and are affected by other planets, uh, the, the orbital period changes slightly. So 3600 is a mathematical number that can shift a little and either way. Uh, has a retrograde orbit. Now, all the members, mostly, <laughs> virtually all the members of our solar system, in, due to the way they were created, orbiting from some kind of uh, nuclear or nebular cloud around the sun and then coalescing, orbit in, in what uh, we call a counterclockwise direction. Mm -hmm. Nibiru orbits in a clockwise and thus called retrograde direction, right. and, and that's the collision, because when one planet, the olden one, orbited one way, Nibiru came in another way, there was a collision. So first of all, this is a, a, a retrograde orbit. Second, according to the uh, biblical prophecies, and I deal with them especially in my book, Genesis Revisited, which you uh, so kindly mentioned, uh, it will appear, or at least according to to expectations in biblical times, it would appear when it does return in the um, constellation of Sagittarius. Which is where Hellbomb no, is. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, and, and then it comes in into our solar, into the center of the solar system at an angle, at a uh, maybe a steep angle. So um, here we have this uh, uh, so called comet. I say so-called because nobody is really sure what it is. You're right. That uh, was first discovered by the two amateur astronomers, which, by the way, says a lot uh, for uh, so-called amateurs who have discovered more than the regular uh, astronomers. It is true. Uh, that it, it, it appeared uh, beyond uh, almost where the Neptune is, and it was already extremely bright. Now, as you... Obviously, now and your listeners know, the comets uh, attain the, the, the head or the comma and the tail and become visible uh, only when they near the sun. Yes. Uh, because then it's then when they begin, uh, the material begins to evaporate, etc. Now, out there, it, it, it is not evaporating yet, and already it is extremely bright. Uh, uh, tens and, and even hundreds of times more bright. Uh, then, um, for example, Halley's Comet was. Yes. Uh, secondly, it uh, has a retrograde orbit. But let me stop you for one second and ask you, if it must be near the sun uh, for this brightness uh, to be apparent because of the evaporation of the snowball or whatever it is that right. comets have, then where is the energy coming from now to create this brightness? Well, okay, that's one of the enigmas. So that's why I say so-called comet, because... Uh, a normal comet does not become that bright uh, at all and does not become that bright that far out. So sec <coughs> first is the brightness. <coughs> then uh, there is the retrograde orbit. Uh, then there is the appearance from Sagittarius. And then there is this orbit of uh, estimated 3,500 years, which is pretty close to the 3,600 of Nibiru. Sure is. So I did get uh, many calls uh, out from uh, fans and others who said, is it Nibiru, is it Nibiru? Because <laughs> they and I, too, uh, would, of course, want uh, to, 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 to see a Nibiru back in our own time. Uh, and I don't think it's Nibiru, because Nibiru, according to all the sources, including current astronomers who, who call it uh, Planet X, and I've been searching for it, and uh, I deal with that too in my writings, uh, is at least uh, three to four times the size of Earth. Uh, and uh, Hale Bob uh, is at least, as you mentioned, 100 miles across. Uh, at some point, uh, the estimates went uh, much uh, 
try and uh, if it is a thousand miles as uh, I did here too from my sources uh, then it is already not a comet it's, it's a small planet it comes uh, to to almost match the size of uh, some of our smaller planets certainly some of the moons uh, that are present planets are the size of Jupiter and Saturn yes present so it's not Nibiru but it in my opinion it is a harbinger of Nibiru a harbinger of uh, if, can I come back now to the question, or do you not wish to answer? No, if, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. If, uh, if Nibiru should return, what would be the effect on our Earth? We, uh, I mean, when I say we, I, I, let's speak for myself, I don't know. The, uh, one time, one time when, the, when it returned, uh, it brought about the deluge, the great flood. Uh, that again uh, is is mentioned and described in the Bible, uh, but uh, as as other chapters at the beginning of Genesis, uh, the, the biblical description is just a uh, a condensed narrative of much more extensive and much more detailed Sumerian and Babylonian text. So once it caused the uh, the catastrophe that is recalled uh, worldwide as the deluge. Uh, the biblical prophecies, the Old Testament uh, prophecies about uh, uh, the day of the Lord and etc., uh, speak of earthquakes and other effects on earth. But that, of course, depends where earth is uh, in its orbit around the sun and where uh, Mars and Jupiter are. Uh, when the Nibiru is, at, at, it's what is called uh, perihelion, meaning yes. the closest uh, past near the, nearest the sun. So if the other two major planets between us and Nibiru, if we are on Nibiru side of the sun and not on the opposite sun, so it is very difficult to predict what would happen. All right. I would like to ask you about this. Worldwide now, uh, I've had many prophets on my program. Uh, Gordon Michael Scallion is a very good friend of mine. And um, he has predicted accurately, I'm sorry to say, uh, the activation of the Ring of Fire. There are volcanoes uh, reported every day now, new volcanoes, Etna, Vesuvius, both in danger of erupting, evacuation orders, volcanoes down in Central America, earthquakes all around the Ring of Fire. What's going on, Zachariah? Ask your prophet. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a prophet, you know. <clears throat> I'm sometimes asked uh, what... Uh, you know, in, in, in one word, what would I call myself? Am I uh, a biblical scholar? Am I a linguist? Am I a historian? Yes. <clears throat> Am I an archaeologist? And I'm a little or a lot of, of all of that. But uh, I, I describe myself, <clears throat> sorry, or prefer to describe myself as a reporter. Because due to my abilities or talents, I'm one of, uh, <clears throat> of a handful of people who can read the Sumerian tablets. Uh, so due to, to what I devoted my lifetime to, I'm able to report to people today what the ancient peoples knew and witnessed. And what they knew uh, art was amazing <coughs> because they knew about the complete makeup of our solar system, which is more than we knew about a hundred or 150 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, they knew of and described Pluto, <clears throat> which we have discovered uh, 65 years ago, that's all. Uh, so they knew that uh, their mathematics was uh, incredible. Uh, some tablets deal with uh, mathematical calculations uh, to the eighth, to the eighth degree, uh, and, uh, and so on and so on. I mean, so the it is your... civilization is amazing. It and is if your... you it... ask them, how could they know that? I mean, how would you know that without telescopes and microscopes? Yeah. They said, all that we know was taught to us by the Anunnaki. Now, that word in Sumerian literally means those who from heaven to earth came. 